Well, students, today we are going to see some typical idioms. What are these idioms? They are a group of words or phrases or expressions that do not mean literally the same. They have got some different meaning. They don't have the literal meaning. So let us see how they are different. And the usage also is very typical. We are not going to target very easy ones today. We are going to see some typical idioms. And you must use them in your conversation also. The first one is Achilles heel. When we say Achilles heel, it means a person's weak point or a vulnerable point. It means a person has got something not very good as a strength. It is his weakness. Now, when we say he's got a good personality, but speaking in fluent English is his actually his heel. That means it's his weak point. You may be good, but you might be having some actually his heel, a weak point. This actually word has been described or taken up from a Greek mythological character, right? So keep using it often and repeat it throughout the day so that you remember this particular idiomatic expression. Let's move on to the next one. Blaze a trail. Now what happens is in the earlier days when uh, people were lost in the woods, when they were roaming around in the forest, they used to mark different trees with the help of cross or by putting some, you know, uh, a kind of imprint to remember that this is the trail that they have followed, the pathway. And they used to cut some grass in between to show the path. So this blazer trail means when you set something new, when you start something, when you initiate something, when you come up with something different. So the usage can be the scientists are trying to blaze the trail by trying to make a vaccine of COVID, right? Blaze a trail to start something different or new. Next one, bury the hatchet. Now to understand this, let's see the meaning of the word hatchet. Hatchet in vernacular Hindi, we call it favra, right? Something that is used for digging. So an instrument that digs mud. So can you kill a person with that hatchet? Of course. So it is something that is very dangerous. It's not a good instrument. It's going to harm the other person. So to bury the hatchet means you settle down. You bring or you sort out differences and it's like a peace is established between the two parties. So to come with peace or to settle differences is known as to bury the hatchet. So let's look at the usage now. The two countries, India and Pakistan, are often told to bury the hatchet by the international communities. Let us bury the hatchet with our enemies so that we can progress further in life. Bury the hatchet to finish off the differences or to settle the scores or to, uh, you know, Stop the fight altogether. That's it. Let's see the next one. Cannot hold the candle to. If something or somebody is inferior and the other person is superior, we say that the inferior person or thing cannot hold the candle to somebody or something. An expression that describes a person or thing that is distinctly inferior to another person or thing. If you find something is not good, of not a good quality, it cannot hold a candle to something that is of a better quality. The American speakers were impressive, but they could not hold the candle to Swami Vivekananda's speech during World Conference of Religion. You must have remembered this Swami Vivekananda when he said the brothers and sisters of America. He took the entire auditorium, you know, by appreciation, by a big round of applause. So he was a person who was superior to the other speakers. So we say they could not hold a candle to such a superior or a good orator. Right? Okay. Next one. To put the cart before the horse. Now the horse is supposed to pull the cart. Cart means the wagon or the vehicle which has got loaded goods. So the horse should be in front typically and cart should be behind. But when we put the cart before the horse mean, it means to reverse the proper order or procedure. Not a normal case, an abnormal one where we are trying to do something that has to be done later. We try to do it before and we topple things. We spoil the 
plan. So usage is the anchor read the word of thanks before the welcome address of the program and put the card before the horse in the program. Right? I think this is very evident. It's a very simple idiom. Let's move to the next one. To take up cudgels for. Now cudgel. Cudgel is something like a stick, a short stick which can harm somebody. It's like a rod. Right? So if you take up cudgels for something, that means you pick up an argument. Not on your own behalf, on somebody else's behalf. You pitch in between and you find out that people are fighting or something and you pick up the argument. Right? So it's not on your own behalf. Remember that. So when the suspect was falsely accused, his lawyer picked up the cudgels to prove him innocent. The lawyer did not fight out for himself. He fought for the suspect. So that is to pick up cudgels or to take up cudgels for. Right? Okay. Next one. To take up the gauntlet. These are typical idioms, specially I wanted to take up so that you understand the meaning of cudgel, gauntlet, hatchet. So let's see gauntlet. Gauntlet is a kind of glove used by people in wars. It's got all the kind of iron and metals attached to it. So it's a strong glove, I would say, pair of gloves, right? So if you take up gauntlet, that means you accept a challenge or an argument, right? So when attacked by her opponents on being corrupt, she picked up her gauntlet and started to prove her innocence. I mean, she took up the challenge. She said, I am not, I am not a person that you can say I am corrupt. So she argued against that and she took up the challenge. So to take up the gauntlet. Look at the difference. Taking up a gauntlet is different from taking up a, what was the first one? Kajal. So, cudgel and gauntlet. Remember their differences. Cudgel, a short rod meant for harming someone and somebody picks up the cudgel on somebody else's behalf. Whereas in case of taking up a gauntlet, we might take up an argument or challenge. So, that is on our own behalf. Gift of the gab. Now, gab means talk, fluent talk. So, usually, you know, the salesmen, they found, uh, you know, good at speaking. They are very good at English or the language which they are speaking. So if somebody is good at that, we say he's got gift of the gab. So usually salesmen have the gift of the gab that makes them, that makes the customers purchase the product. That means they are good at speaking fluently, right? So for that, the idiomatic expression is known as gift of the gab. Now jump on the bandwagon. Let's understand what is a bandwagon. It's a vehicle or a wagon which carries the band people, people who are going to perform in the band. So this is something, this wagon is a major attraction in the parades, right? So if there is a band wagon, if people try to jump in it, literally, it means that, you know, they want to gain attention. They want to do something that is very popular, that is very prevalent that time. So if you jump into a bandwagon, it doesn't mean that there is a parade going on and you literally jump in that bandwagon. It means there is a popular activity or something that is very much in vogue and you are trying to join that activity, right? So let's look at the usage. Initially, there was only one gift shop in the vicinity. Slowly, everybody started jumping on the bandwagon. This means that everybody else also thought to join the business of starting a gift shop because it became very popular, right? It was actually that bandwagon or that popular thing of setting a gift shop that made everybody join that particular business, right? So that is known as jump on the bandwagon, right? Next one. Let's, uh, you know, wind it up with this. Uh, let us practice these 10 sentences, I would say these 10 idiomatic expressions. Only then you would come up with something very good because vocabulary is considered good if students are good at idiomatic expressions, right? This is all for today. Thank you.